this is Sue from Homesteading with Sue, and I am going to make homemade angelias tonight for dinner. And I thought I would bring you guys along to see how easy it is to make your actual homemade angelata sauce. Um, this is, recipe is by Cookie and Kate, and it makes two cups of sauce per batch. I'm actually tripling the batch because I know I like it. If you like the Rosarita enchilada sauce that's red, that comes in a can, you'll love this. It's even better than that. So first ingredients is three tablespoons of oil. I'm using nine. Second ingredients is three tablespoons of flour. I am using nine. And then you need one tablespoon of chili powder per batch. And I used about two and a half tablespoons because I like it warm, but not too warm. And then one tablespoon of ground cumin. I'm using three. A half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm using one and a half. A half a teaspoon, a fourth of a teaspoon of oregano. I'm using three quarters of a teaspoon. A fourth of a teaspoon salt. I'm using three quarters. A pinch of cinnamon. I'm using three pinches of cinnamon. Six tablespoons of, well, three, two tablespoons of tomato paste. I am using six. Two tablespoons, no. Two cups of vegetable broth, which I made at home, and I'm using six cups. And one teaspoon apple cider vinegar or distilled white vinegar. I am using three teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. And then uh, black pepper to taste. First off, the sauce comes together really fast. So you'll want to have all your dry ingredients and everything close to you. Um, in a medium sized pan, you'll want to turn the heat on, warm up the oil until it's hot enough. Like to, to test it, you'll just um, take a little bit of the flour combination and see if it's hot. It'll sizzle. Once the Oil is hot. You'll not want. To, you won't want to walk away from your pan. You will continuously whisk until, or for about a minute, and then you'll slowly add the broth while whisking constantly to remove any lumps. Raise the heat to medium heat and bring mixture to a simmer. Then reduce the heat as necessary to make it a light simmer. And then we'll cook, uh, whisk often for five to seven minutes until the sauce is thickened. And then we'll remove from the heat and whisk in the vinegar. And then we'll add the pepper to it. This step will take a couple of minutes before it's ready to be sizzling. Oh yes, it sizzles now. So we're going to go ahead and pour in the flour and spice mixture, stirring the whole time. When it changes colors in about a minute, Alexa, start a one minute timer, please. I don't know if you guys can't see the difference in the color. I'm sorry. I'll learn how to do this eventually. Anyway, I came across this recipe by um, wanting to make enchiladas and not having any enchilada sauce. And I didn't want to go to the store. So um, this is like my third time of making it. 
I decided to make a bigger batch today so I could actually put some in the freezer. Alexa, stop timer. Okay, our next step is to whisk the tomato sauce into the mixture. Then we're going to slowly pour in the six cups of broth. To get out any of the lumps. I should have really put in the chili powder when I did the, uh, the other dry ingredients, so I'm just going to put it in now. Once we get this all whisked in, we are going to uh, raise the heat to medium heat and let this simmer for about five to seven minutes with um, a stirring occasionally. So I'm going to turn up my heater, my heater, my uh electric element that I'm cooking on. Okay. Come on. Simmer. The more the sauce cools, the thicker it will be. And then um, at the end, we'll whisk in the um, apple cider vinegar. And we will also add the black pepper. And then when it cools a little bit, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to make two pint jars plus a little bit of, um, the sauce into a half pint jar so that I have enough to make my enchiladas for two tries. I did start a five minute timer for this um, and it, it's starting to get a little thicker. Uh, 
I don't know if I will go ahead and show you making the enchiladas tonight with it or not. Um, it depends on um, how I'm feeling at the time, I think. I am going to use, I'm going to make beef and sausage enchiladas though, with cheese and dehydrated, rehydrated mushrooms in them. All right, we're at our very last step of putting in the apple cider vinegar and a pinch of black pepper. I'm going to whisk it again. I have my two jars that I'm going to freeze um, this in back here in the hot water so that they don't get a shock when the hot uh, enchilada sauce goes in. And we're going to do that just like we did with the... Um, With the canning of the broth earlier, Oops, different tape, sorry. Um, so I'm just going to scoop some of this out and fill up this jar. And I'm only going to go to just under, just under this ring around the jar because it's going to expand when we put it in the freezer. And then the rest of this sauce I'm going to use for tonight's enchiladas. And if I have some left over, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the freezer too. I probably could have used something better than this to scoop that out with. That's okay. Dedication is what we'll call it. And two cups of this is definitely um, enough enchilada sauce for one helping or one studying of enchiladas, in my in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe these rings off. Not with that. wipe these rims off with just warm water because and the jar apparently I made a mess um, and then I'm going to use one of my favorite canning lids my Denali lid I use those for dehydrating and pressure canning and uh, uh, also, uh, D, uh, I don't know, something else. As you can see, I've already put in my jars some of the enchilada sauce to be able to be put in the freezer. Um, I did not go all the way to the top because it will expand and the jar will break if you do that. And I'm going to use the rest of this enchilada sauce for dinner tonight. If there's too much, then I'll just put it in another jar and um, put it in the freezer like I did the other ones. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. I used my favorite lids, my favorite Denali lids. I use them for my seasonings. I use them for dehydrating. I use them for anything I put in the freezer, all of my canning needs. 
and then I'm sure there's a whole bunch more that I use them for. Thank you. Hey, it's Sue. I just wanted to let you know that I left all of the blumpers in so that you could all see that I am a real person and I try more than once and I decided I didn't like any of them so I put them all in. Thanks.